This is Stacey McKibben with the Master Communicator Podcast, where CEOs, C-suite executives, and senior leaders share their advice. It's six questions in nine minutes because the best leaders know how to share their ideas concisely and quickly. Let's jump right in. First question, in a few sentences, tell me who you are and what you do. Sure. Um, hi, my name is Maggie Williams. I am the founder and CEO of Skipper. We are on a mission to help you and your pet live your best life. And the way that we're doing that is by revolutionizing the pet parent experience through one single trusted brand and end to end platform. Um, we recently announced Skip Town, which is the first of its kind tech enabled private indoor outdoor off leash dog park bar and pet care facility. Oh my goodness. That sounds super exciting. Well, you'll definitely have to let us know how we can go check that out. Does that sound good? Yep. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Question two for you. What's the best thing about leading people from your perspective? Um, yeah, I would say it's the combination of two things. It's solving a problem, solving a real problem that affects people's lives and then doing it with a group of diverse people that are bringing with them the insights and the experiences and skills um, from a eclectic and diverse and different background. Um, I think it's a, I think for me, it's about being able to build something from nothing um, with courageous, strong, smart people that you want to spend your time with. Um, it's about pulling everybody together and making this machine that works to help um, provide a, a meaningful difference in someone's life. And um, my love language is quality time. And so being able to like pull together a group of people that, you know, can, can come on board and, and gets the mission that we're all in and, and buys into it and, and really feels ownership over that mission to do that together. That, that is everything for me. Yeah. I love that. Um, and again, it's such a, a heart centered answer. Um, and I think it's just so critical in today's day and age, you know, the idea of capitalism or, you know, um, conscious capitalism. And I think you're, you're kind of coming from that conscious space, which I appreciate. Yeah. Question three, I often hear from other leaders that business would be great if it weren't for that pesky people part. I'm curious, especially for somebody who spends a lot of time with animals. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. I, I think that business is all about the people. Um, I think that business is a commodity to deliver value to people. And I feel like if somebody feels that their business would be great if it weren't for all people, then, I mean, I think I would say and maybe they're not your right customers or maybe you're not the right business. I love that. Again, so you're taking responsibility and putting it on the leader's shoulders to find value in that or to, to challenge themselves. Are they in the right space? That's pretty cool. Uh, question four, what other successful business leaders like yourself should be on the podcast? And I'm asking that from the, from the perspective of who should we be paying attention to? Who are some really great and insightful voices in the marketplace right now that you're listening to? Um, you know, I get a lot of values out of, out of my peers. It's, you know, how I've gotten from, you know, a bootstrap startup, how I've raised over three and a half million dollars to date, how, you know, when business challenges come up, it's like the people that I go to or the people who are kind of like the, the soldiers who I feel like are like leading their own cause alongside of me. Um, and so one particular person, um, his name is Alex Smirzniak and he runs a company called To You Laundry, which is a valet service for um, laundry and dry cleaning. And it's based out of Charlotte where I'm based as well. And they're also in two other cities. Um, he is someone who also built something from nothing and um, has done it with so much poise and leadership and skill um, and has navigated a lot of really tough circumstances and has really been a, a support to us in a big way. So I would, I would definitely recommend him. I love that. And again, I love how you're really, you know, hearkening to this built something from nothing. I think there is a lot of um, value in listening to folks who have been there, done that, as opposed to went to school and studied that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I kind of talk about the school hard knocks sometimes. And I think, you know, degrees sometimes can be overrated um, and the experience underrated or undervalued, excuse me, you know. Oh, yeah. It's all about the experience. We are living. We are living that right now. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> what piece of advice about communication would you give to other leaders? Um, people don't remember what you said. They remember how you made them feel. Um, that's Maya Angelou. 
right. and one of my favorite quotes. And I very truly believe that communication isn't just what you say, it's what you do. Mm. I love that. I haven't heard that before. Communication isn't what you say, it's what you do. I think, again, it's kind of that, uh, almost like a, a form of active listening. It's like yeah. a, right? Like a, a form of mm -hmm. active communication. Um, that's pretty cool. All right, magic question number six for you. Tell us about your favorite boss or teacher. Who has really inspired you? Yeah, um, I feel like I've had a lot of great mentors, teachers in my life. I feel like everybody in some way is a teacher, um, if you look at it that way. I would say that particularly influential, I had an English teacher in high school. Uh, his name is Louis Lazaro. And um, he left a mark just on my education and my view of the world because of how he brought such a level um, of depth to the material. And I love to read. And I specifically realized through his class that I loved learning about the context um, of when and how the literature was written so understanding the story of the author and the time and place around those stories. And I think when you kind of like take things to deeper levels, the, the worlds that are open to you, I, you know, I, that was just incredibly impactful, not just as a, an understanding of English as culture, but also in everything in life, right? And how we empathize with people, how we understand each other, um, how we, how we, tell stories about ourselves and and about our experiences and what that means and how do you like foster a deeper connection to people who are close to you to to your impact in the world and um yeah i just remember that when i was 16 and and really starting to think about that and it never i guess it was just an enlightening thing the way that he just do dove so deeply in in just kind of the the authors of the literature that we wrote and and kind of their experience and the time period that they experienced life in and it just makes you think about everything with context and i think that that is underrated and incredibly important um and i think it's one of the biggest reasons that we have mis you know miscommunications and um it just conflict is it is just a, a general a lack of um of understanding and empathy, which I think sometimes context and an understanding of that context can help solve. Yeah, I mean, you even think about that in driving traffic, right? And somebody cuts you off and your first inclination is like, oh, you know, like freeway finger, right? And like, you know, yeah. who's that, who that bleepity bleep, you know, sort of idea. And then you, and what if they were actually on their way to the hospital? Or what if they were rushing somebody somewhere? Or what if, you know, and so it's like, again, in those moments, you have a choice. You can choose to give the charitable assumption and assume that something is important that they need to be there faster than you, you know, or you can think that they're just being a jerk, you know. Um, yeah. But it's how you, but then it, it affects how you feel in that moment, right? So I think, again, mm -hmm. that context is so incredibly important. Um, that really changes uh, the, the dynamics of a conversation. And it's funny that you talk about storytelling and that kind of that vulnerability and sharing right now as you and I were preparing for this conversation. We talked about just the, the vulnerability of now all the video conferencing and everybody being in their homes mm. to really, you know, express themselves in these sorts of very personal ways. You know, do you think that that's going to be um, part of our new norm now as we, as we go to explore kind of this virtual reality that we, need, that we now live in? I hope that vulnerability can be our new norm. I don't know if you follow Brene Brown. I love um, her. <laughs> her call to courage and about how vulnerability is such an important part of courage. Um, I think we all need to be more vulnerable and then we need to be more accepting of people who are vulnerable for us and in front of us. Um, so yeah, I do hope that, especially amidst kind of the situations that we're finding ourselves in um, with the coronavirus, that this can be one of the positives that come out of it is that we kind of embrace our humanity a little bit more and a little deeper. Yeah. We can push to. Mm. I love that. Okay, well, that made me smile, right? And again, at a time when things are, are a bit uncertain and things are a little wonky, it, I think, again, it's, these, these conversations are really nice to kind of go, okay, things are, things are okay. You know, people out there are, are doing good things. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, Maggie. How can people find you? Um, so the best way to find me is to take a look at um, Skipper or Skiptown online. So we, you can find us online at skiptownclt.com. Um, on Instagram, you can follow us. Um, our handle is Skipper. And then um, me personally, um, it's my handle is at Queen City Queen. And then I have a LinkedIn profile. I'm Maggie Williams. Um, you can find us there. And yeah, we hope you check us out. And if you have a pet, um, come learn about us and let us know where you live. And hopefully we'll get to your city soon. We're really excited about what we're doing and how we're bringing a new, um, new level of pet care to pet parents. 
awesome. Well, again, thank you so much. Really excited to have you here. And this is Stacey McKibben with the Master Communicator Podcast. For more ideas and insights, please go check us out at www.conciliateam.com. We look forward to seeing you again next time. Take care. Thanks. Thank you.